oldish, very affluent institutions that are really complicated and that mm. had, can bring a lot of good and bring a lot of injury to our city. With what's actually real, in real time happening here in West Philadelphia, and then the role that Penn and, and Drexel and before it became St. Joe's kind of yeah, I want to see in like, you know, so I guess the University of Sciences, yeah. And other institutions too have played in changing West Philadelphia. Yeah. In some in some really complicated ways. You know, I think I'll speak very personally on it. I think as a as a as a black man who's from Baltimore but has lived in Philadelphia for almost thirty years. Yeah. Seeing injury to Communities are, are predominantly of color and predominantly black. Yeah, it hurts. Full stop. It hurts, you know, and, um, you know, I saw and felt the effect of gentrification in Baltimore growing up. I'm certainly a kid and so mm -hmm. processed in a very different way. Mm -hmm. Seeing neighborhoods change. And, you know, some of those changes were like, oh, cool, like there's some new restaurants here and I, I guess it looks a little cleaner. And some of those changes were a little bit more frightening where there's a whole lot more cops around here now. Mm -hmm. While those, my friend's house isn't there anymore. And so the, yeah, really hard. You know, I think um, the story of the Black Bottle is one that my office and I and others on campus have really tried to lift up in the name of historicizing it and yeah. memorializing it because there were so many people who just never did heard of it. Yeah, and uh, this is not a tangent, but I think it's similar with like the mood bombing of there are just things that need to never evaporate with stories we need to always tell. Yeah. The good side of the Black Baja, of like, so this is a strong neighborhood with families and businesses, congregations and traditions that shouldn't be forgotten yes and then the sort of the the sad story of displacement yes and people being pushed out or landlords sort of selling out and not caring about their residents um, I think the role that the official city of Philadelphia played needs to be incorporated into it too yeah I think a lot of this gets hung on Penn's neck and the city literally city council sort of had, had and has a role Yes. But then the kind of contemporary side of, you know, University City Townhomes, which, yes, is in the area that would have been described as the Black Bottom and was built in response mm -hmm. to the displacement and destruction of the Black Bottom, now facing its own destruction with its owners, yeah, yes. attempting to sell and displace people there. And we can talk a little bit more about control and, and not role and all of that, too. But just the emotional side of the terror of being told that your home ain't going to be here next year is a nightmare. Yeah. That the place you live and potentially raise kids and have your friends and it's next to the subway you take, it's close yeah. to the hospital you go to, your job is right there, you're used to it. That, hey, we're selling this for the owners to say is, is frightening and upsetting. Yeah. And again, overwhelmingly dis we're womanly hitting black people. Yes. <laughs> really, really hurt stuff. And the question marks around what's going to happen as of this recording is, it's tough. We just, I'm not sure how this plays out. I mean, I, I think the owners have sort of made their decision and aren't right. changing their mind with no matter what amount of pressure public and private and and I agree with that you know I certainly their right to do that but I sure have my own personal opinion of I don't think this is being done well yeah as well as it could have and should have been done and oh uh, so so it's it's sad golden's very very sad there's I don't know that there's anything else to be said about it besides that it's just, it is just profoundly sad. Um, 
the role of institutions like Penn, as you say, are and Drexel and the Science Center and University of the Sciences, St. Joe's, those are not the only side of the story, but it certainly feels like with the coverage that has been done in the news that they seem to be the fall guy. Well, I mean, and, and I think justly and unjustly, you know, I think sure. in the sense of these were institutions that played major roles in gentrification is almost too light a word. Yes. Displacement of neighborhoods, not just the Black Bottom. Yeah. There are a couple other sort of ethnic enclaves along along this path that have that are here anymore. Yes. And the result of those actions fifty almost sixty years ago, in part, are the cause of where we are today. Some of this is displacement, some of it is white flight. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, you know, there's sort of a um, like a strong Italian neighborhood in West Philadelphia that, mm -hmm. uh, as as black people moved more from kind of uh, the ward where Du Bois does Philadelphia Negro to West Philadelphia. Yeah, that white flight further west um, into the suburbs. Some of that in kind of South Philly. So mm -hmm. there's other reasons they left. Penn also sort of built these high rises to dorms. Mm -hmm. That's what we used to call super block. That was that part. I don't think would have been described as the black bottom back then. I think there's an argument made that it was a black bottom, but those were um, there was like a small Jewish neighborhood there. I think another sort of Eastern European little neighborhood might be too strong. A couple blocks, of yeah, there that aren't there anymore. Yeah, um, there. Um, and it's worth noting a lot of this transition happened in different ways. Some of this was landlords wanting to cash out and homeowners wanting to cash out and seeking out the university in the city and, mm -hmm. and happily leaving. Yeah. And some of this was um, what we would almost call eminent domain that the city sort of takes over for city purposes. Right. That is far more traumatizing and far more scary. And I think that's more the story of the Black Bottom than it is some of the other neighborhoods that just are here. Mm -hmm. And then there's stuff that kind of um, is from turn of the century there, I ran on the water, there was something called like Blockley House. It's, this is mostly where like the yes. health system is right now. Yes. And it was kind of like an almshouse slash um, sort of like mental health facility and there was sort of some uh, kind of legal stuff going on there too that ultimately was not healthy and was not meeting code standards that kind of needed to be sure. at least knocked down. Yeah. Um, but that's a part of the history that's not there anymore and then, then they put the this convention center there, and then they put pens. Oh, yeah. There's no yeah. rim into a lovely house left that's just chomping pen. Yeah. That too has been displaced in a different way. Um, and as you did at the beginning of our conversation, all of this was Lenny Lenape land before all of that. Perfect. And in, in forest and swamp that had animals and like, yeah, that has also been knocked down, pushed out, and is a part of the history. Last little thing I'll say, this is not just the story of Philadelphia and West Philadelphia, it's the story of America. And it's important to name that. I don't think we are any different from New York City yes. and Baltimore and to see yes. Austin and then other major cities that have pushed out native population and pushed around people of color either out of the Alton areas or and lock them into metropolitan areas. That's like to over and over to escape, but uh -huh. to deal. It's not lost on me that when people give tours of the Black Fauna, yeah, they end up, the very few people who would live there who were still alive. And, I mean, you're talking about septuagenarians, octogenary to Yeah. Or the kids of people who lived in right in the bottom for a, are so light. They often walk right here on Market Street. Yes. And they're between 34th and 38th, but especially 36th and 37th Street. And they would say that we are recording this in the heart of what was the Black Bottom. Uh-huh. 
and it's complicated. I mean, there's a lot of, some might say a lot of good that's happening here with the research and technology and jobs that are here, education that's always happening. Yeah. And yet, the black family down there here that rented from homes here and the family yeah. owned homes here don't have a lot to show for and don't have a lot of, don't have the same access that a lot of us do. Yeah. But with you know, our access cards and, and financial resources. Mm -hmm. Neighborhoods like the Black Bottom, neighborhoods like in mm -hmm. Philadelphia and, and what is called University City are comprised of individuals. Yeah. Who have their own stories of where they went to school, what they find joy in, uh, their own quirks, their own vocations, not just milestone moments in a neighborhood where buildings came down and buildings came up. Ahead. So your your phrase of we need to do a better job of affirming the humanity in these stories. It's a beautiful call. Um, and that, to be fair, it needs to go in every direction, too. Because I think that some of the criticism of Penn and Drexel, and I can only speak on behalf of Penn, about Penn, these also were institutions made up of human beings with their own dreams and their own hopes and their own shortcomings and their own personalities. A, B, you know, a place like Penn is comprised of 20,000 students. Yeah. Another 40 to 60,000 employees. Yeah. Most of whom don't sort of have an active role in the decision making of stuff. You know, the average 19 mm -hmm. year old who's here trying to become a doctor or an engineer. Yes. Wasn't alive when this happened, doesn't have any decision. And it is, and many of whom are advocating on behalf of UC Donalds, for example. Um, which is which is amazing, but all to say, like to complicate and to humanize these conversations, is is a beautiful challenge for all of us. Hey fam, it's Polly. If you liked that video, want to join the conversation, be part of this community, click the subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Uncommon good. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.